All right, I think I'm going to call this the top 10 Linux tips for beginners in less than 10 minutes. So let's get started with number 10. And that is what is a distro or a distribution? You've probably heard of Linux and you've also probably heard of all of these other names, Debian, Slackware, Fedora, Linux Mint. What do those mean? Well, basically it's like uh, having a car, so an automobile, but then having a Chevy, a Ford, a Toyota, all of those different brands. Well, that's kind of what these different distros are. They're not really brands. Some of them are, some of them are companies, but they're just just different ways of approaching Linux. It, they have slightly different looks, slightly different feel, but a great way to think about it is just like different brands of cars. So it's all the same underneath. It's all a car or it's all Linux, but there's different variations and different ways of doing things. Like you can't put a Toyota alternator on a Chevy Coupe because the parts don't quite fit. Well, the same thing here, but you can still drive them to the market if you need to. Number nine, GNOME, KDE, what on earth are all these things? I thought that we had different distributions, but now, you know, when I install a distribution, I get offered the option of installing GNOME or installing KDE. Uh, what does that mean? Well, we have to look quickly at what Linux itself is. Linux is just the text-based kernel. It's this underlying operating system that will function whether or not you have a pretty graphical interface or not. The graphical interface or the GUI is called X Windows. And X Windows is just like a program or a layer that sits on top of Linux. Linux doesn't require you to use X Windows or use a GUI at all, but it supports it. I put x.org here because that's kind of the name for the windowing system is x.org, but X Windows. And then with X Windows, there are different window decorations, I think is a good way to put it. So X Windows is the GUI that goes on top of Linux. These different things like GNOME, KDE, XFCE, which is one of my favorite these are like window decorations, how programs minimize, if there's a dock or if there's a start menu. And these are called window managers or desktop managers, depending on how robust they are. So this top layer is just what the things look like and if it has a dock or doesn't have a dock. But the GUI system itself is called X Windows. She takes us to number eight. What you should do when you're starting, use a live CD or a USB, like a live USB drive. Most distributions, especially the popular ones like Ubuntu, Linux Mint, Fedora, a lot of them are going to come with a live CD. And that basically means you can boot to the CD or to the USB drive and have a fully functional system without touching your hard drive. I like to say that it's like try before you buy, but buy of course is in quotes because it's free. <laughs> now, if you have a, a CD drive and you can burn a CD image, great. You could use a CD. Most people nowadays have USB drives. So I, I urge you to check out this program called UNet Bootin. Now there's no G, it's not booting. It's UNet Bootin. And you can go to the website, just Google that. It's on SourceForge. You can download it for Windows or Mac or Linux, and you can create bootable USB drives from Linux ISO Live CDs. And that's a great way to test things out, which brings us to number seven. Use a virtual machine. If you've ever used a virtual machine, you know that it's easy to spin up and delete VMs. Every operating system you're using on your desktop or laptop machine will have some sort of VM system you can download, whether it's VirtualBox or, or a commercial one. Use a virtual machine. If you put that sucker full screen, it's going to be just like booting from a live CD, but you won't even have to reboot your computer. Virtual machines are a great, great way to try Linux and experience it. I'm gonna have to go a little bit quicker, but number six is package management. Now, package management means how do I install stuff? You know, if you're from a Windows environment, you go to the website and download the setup.exe file, it doesn't work quite that way on Linux. You use package management systems. Now, if you're nerdy and you've seen directions on the internet, you probably see things, directions for the command line with like apt-get and, and using yum or, you know, programs like that. However, almost every distribution, in fact, I'm sure every GUI distribution, if you're gonna be trying it out, will have some sort of a nice front end like a software center or like an app store if you're familiar with smartphones it's gonna have that type of a system so you can install packages so don't worry about being able to install programs on the command line to get started just go ahead and use the GUI front end so that you can install and search and see what kind of packages are available 
Number five, now if you're using Linux, you've probably seen a folder structure like in a, in a, in a window like this, and things in Linux are stored in, in different spots than like a Windows environment. So I'm just going to point out a couple. I, I've taken a snapshot of the, the root level or the highest level, lowest level of the Linux operating system, and there's a couple folders I want to point out. So executable files, when you install a program, they're going to go into a bin folder. Configuration files for the system, like for your web server and stuff, they're going to be in the etc or etsy. Sometimes people call it etsy, but it's etc. In that folder, that's where configuration files for system level configuration are going to go. Personal files, so like your documents and stuff, are going to go inside home. No, not directly in home. It's going to be home, and then inside there, there's going to be a folder for every user on the system. But that's where all the personal files are stored. Obviously, there's a lot more we can learn about it, but at the end, I'll just point out the var folder. This is where bulk files, like log files and stuff like that goes. Okay, so that's the general folder structure in Linux. Don't worry about it too much. Just know that your folder is going to be inside home. That's a good place to start. Number four, the terminal, the big bad terminal. Everybody's so afraid of using the Linux terminal. It's just a window. It's kind of like DOS. If you're if you're an old timer and you've used DOS where it's just like a command line interface to Win to the to the Microsoft operating system. However, with Linux, it's not just like an add-on thing. Everything in Linux is text-based. You remember my graphic where I was describing GNOME and KDE? At the base level of Linux, everything is running in just text-based configuration files. So everything that you access on a system is actually going to be manipulating text. So you can do things on the command line, and if you do things on a GUI, it's just going to be manipulating this text-based system underneath. So don't be afraid of the command line. You can use it along with GUIs. It's not either or. They both are doing the same thing. So don't be afraid of the command line. It's something that is just a shortcut and sometimes a lot quicker than using a GUI. Number three, when you mount a hard drive or a floppy drive or a CD, no more drive letters. It's not like C colon, D colon, A colon. All mounted devices, whether they're USB drives or CD drives or even network mounts, they're all just going to be on an empty folder. So this forward slash, the root level of your system is just an empty folder where your hard drive is mounted. Media slash CD-ROM is usually where your CD-ROM is mounted. Media and then the USB drive name, that's often where USB drives are mounted. So rather than looking for like an A device or a B device, it's just going to be a folder inside your system that happens to be that device or that network location. Number two, you may have just noticed when we were talking about mount points and drive locations, I always use forward slashes. And that's because in Linux, you use forward slashes, whereas in Windows, you use these backslashes. So backslashes in Windows, forward slashes in Linux. I like to think that Windows is backwards because of the backslashes. Har, har, har. And then number one, this is the one number one tip for Linux users everywhere, especially if you're beginning. Get help. There's so much help out there on the internet. There's lots of forums, IRC channels, if you're familiar with IRC. Just Google search a particular problem you're having, and thousands of other people are probably having the same problem. And yes, now this isn't necessarily just a plug for my Linux training, but get training either from me or from elsewhere. Watch some of our micro nuggets. The more you learn, the more you realize that Linux is is not this scary beast of an operating system. It's actually kind of simplistic and elegant in how all the simple pieces go together and work really, really well. But ultimately, that supersedes all of my tips. Have fun. Linux is a lot of fun. It's cool. It's free. You don't have to worry about, you know, you're investing money in something you may or may not use. Linux is free. Use it. Have fun and get super nerdy. I hope that this has been informative for you. It's been fun for me. <laughs> Thank you for viewing.